Welcome to this quick start lighting tutorial for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we take a look at rendering an architectural interior with a nighttime look using artificial lights. Open the scene file interior night start.3dm found in the downloaded assets from the tutorial's webpage linked below. To begin with, in the asset editor settings tab, turn on material override to allow us to better focus on just the lighting which also speeds up the interactive renders. It replaces the material with this gray one that we have here. There are, however, a couple of glass materials here that we need to respect, so in the options panel for glass frosted, turn off can be overridden, and then do the same for glass window neutral as well. So, in the Geometry tab, you can see that there's a V-Ray proxy in the back, which is the skin system that decorates this wall. It's a pretty complicated piece of geometry, which can slow down test rendering, so I'll disable it through its layer. So, open the Layers panel if you don't already have it, and under the Walls layer, disable the Skin sublayer like so. Next, since this is a nighttime render, I need to disable any environment light that's in the scene. So I do need to disable the sun and sky system. So in the lighting tab, disable the Rhino document sun with either the switch here or the toggle right next to the name. Now for the sky, switch to the settings tab and under environment, click the texture icon here. The sky texture is being used for the background, so click back and then go ahead and uncheck this box to disable it in the scene, which reverts us back to using black. Now let's place some lights into the scene. We have this set of pendant lights motivating the lighting, and then these recessed light cans in the ceiling here as well. Let's start with the pendants. I'll zoom into this first pendant light, and you can see the light's model consists of the housing, some internal parts, as well as a lens to that light. So we need to place the light inside the housing behind the lens. In the Lights tab of the V-Ray toolbar, click on the Sphere Light icon. Click and drag out a sphere in the front view like so. Now it needs to sit inside the lights without touching or overlapping it to prevent any weird artifacting. Place the sphere light first inside the front view and then in the top view to get it nice and centered. I'll type in copy in the command line here to duplicate the light and place a second light into the next pendant and then another in the next pendant and so on for the remaining five lights. In the asset editor, we can see a total of six lights for all the pendants. These lights are all individual, so changes to one do not affect the others. So let's use Rhino's grouping to make a group. Select all six of the sphere lights and then use the group command to make them all one group together. So changes to one like intensity or color will be reflected in the five others as well. Click the interactive render icon to start a test render. These sphere lights are beginning to light the scene. In the settings tab under the camera rollout, Lower the exposure value to brighten the image. I'll leave mine at just under 4 for now. Let's add lights to the recessed cans now. Stop the render. We'll use an IES light which uses an IES profile to define the look of the light. For more on IES lights, see one of our previous quick start video tutorials on exterior nighttime lighting. Click on the IES light icon in the toolbar and in the front view, move over to space outside the geometry for now, and then click once and drag to define the size, and then move the mouse up to define the direction and click to point the light down. The light is set to emit from a single point right now, so we need to make sure that the point sits below the geometry of the light cans to maintain the original design intent of the IES profile coming from the lighting manufacturer. Select the light and move it over in the front view to one of our ceiling cans. This point here is the bottom of the can light, so I'll place the IES light right below that. Now I can use the top view to place the light to the can 
and I'll snap it right into place here. Now copy the light and place it under the next can. Keep copying and placing the IES lights for all these seven can lights in the scene. Now that we have them, select all seven lights and group them together like we did earlier with the sphere lights. In the asset editor, select one of the IES lights and assign the IES profile spot3.ies which is found with the downloaded assets for this tutorial. Since the lights are all grouped, they will all have the same profile. Start a new interactive render and we have a ton of light already. In the camera settings, adjust the exposure up to 8 and you can see better the IES profile that we're getting against the walls. Go to the Lights tab and select one of the lights. We need to turn the light brighter, but the slider is maxed out at 30. Simply enter a value in the box here to define a higher value. I'll put in 200 for these lights so we have a little bit more light, but it's not quite enough, so I'll go up to 500 instead. Select one of the IES lights, and since the light is pretty much defined by its IES profile, we have to manually turn on Intensity, which is measured in lumens. Now we have 1700 lumen lights in the cans which gives us more light than before but not quite enough so I'll set this to 2400 lumens. As I mentioned before the IES lights emit from a single point which gives us harsh shadows as you can see here on the ground. To soften the shadows a bit we need to change the shape of the lights in the asset editor. I'll use circle for the shape and I'll leave the diameter at the default as that's doing a pretty well enough job with the shadows. Now let's address colors to make the can lights cool and the pendant lights to be warm. In the asset editor, click on the color swatch and pick a very pale blue like this with just a touch of color to it. Select a sphere light and in the asset editor, change the color to a pale orange like so, and again with just a touch of color to it to give a warm light in the scene. Now if you can recall way back to the start of the video, I, I know it's hard to do, we excluded a frosted glass material from the material override, which is the glass lenses of the can lights. Since we have the IES lights below the can light geometry, the lights look like they're turned off. One option is to apply an emissive material to the glass lenses, which will make the glass look like it's lit up. In the material list, in the asset editor, select the glass frosted material. Switch to the Quick Settings tab. The material we can see is a glass type material, so switch it to an emissive material, which will emit some light. The lenses now look like they're emitting light, and they look like they're actually on. The material doesn't actually emit a direct light into the scene, but it does emit an indirect light that's calculated in the GI. I'll zoom in for a closer look at a can light with my scroll wheel. And even though it looks perfectly fine and lit up, I'll increase the intensity of the lens's emissive material to 5 to generate more light at the lens itself. It doesn't really change the lighting noticeably at all, but it will make a nice difference when we're adding glare in the VFB later on. Okay, so we're good on the lights inside, but I'd like to get a touch of environment to come in through the glass doors as well. So back to the settings tab and the environment rollout. The background is just black right now, so click the swatch and pick a pale dark blue like this and we'll see a hint of the night sky coming through the glass door. Stop the render and let's set this up for a final render. Go to the Layers tab and re-enable the skin layer on the wall. In the Asset Editor, disable the Material Override. Under Renderer, disable Interactive and also disable Progressive but leave quality at high. Under the render output, adjust the image width height to be 800 by 1000. Then of course, if you have Swarm like I do, to render this on multiple systems, you can enable it now. Whether you have Swarm or not, make sure a Vista 2 view is selected, and then go ahead and start your render. After just under 4 minutes with my Swarm nodes rendering this image, we have our final look. And of course, final is never really final, so click Show Corrections Control to make final adjustments to the render. I'll make the scene a little bit warmer with white balance, and then in color balance, I'll set the shadows to be a bit cooler. 
Next, I'll add a color curve like so to enhance the contrast in the image with a bit of a curve like this. You can always load up my adjustments from the downloaded assets as well, or you can make your own. Now, these areas of the image are extremely bright in the picture. Turn on force color clamping with this icon and you'll see what I mean. The image is over bright in those areas. The light sources are very over bright while the top of the counter is not too bad. We verified that in the image the light sources are where the most brightness is so turn off the force color clamping. This is going to work to our benefit when we turn on lens effects and turn on the glare effect. Change type to glare type from camera parameters and immediately the image shows us a glare at the brightest areas of the image. Check on turn on diffraction for a little bit of a nice color effect inside that glare. Now adjust the weight and size to find a nice subtle look like this. Now this was pretty easy to do because those light source areas were that much brighter than everything else in the image. Experiment with how the glare looks to you, such as adjusting the number of blades and even rotating them to your liking. Keep adjusting the values to find something you prefer. Keep in mind that too high a value for weight may start blurring more of the image than you want, so keep that value reasonable. And there you have it, a night render of this interior space using sphere and IES lights in V-Ray. Thank you for joining us for this nighttime interior lighting quick start video for V-Ray for Rhino.